kids are friends. I'm so glad to see you all. I want to tell you a story. I visited a school the other day. I saw a smaller boy. His name is Neville. Walking along the school corridor. Then I saw two boys, Reuben and Henry. Reuben hid behind a wall and suddenly stepped out in front of Neville and said to him, Teacher's pet, aren't you? You work hard so the teacher will give you extra mark in the test. The other boy, Henry, had a blue eye. He said to Neville, So, you think you're better than us because you got the highest mark for our class test? He took off his school bag and threw it on the grass. Neville tried to be strong and said, Please leave me alone. I don't think I'm better than you. I try to work hard so that one day I can have a good job. Give me that food! Suddenly, another boy, Alex, came walking by and saw what the bullies were doing to Neville. The bullies took Neville's lunch and then threw the food on the grass. Suddenly, Alex came closer and tried to stop them. What are you doing? Mind your own business. He can fight his own battles. The other bully in was said, Look, he wants to be a hero. I don't know what to do. Should I walk away and leave the boy to fight his own fight? Should I help him? Maybe I should just walk away. It's not my battle. Hi kids up friends, it's so good to have you with us again. We have some new friends visiting us here in Kids Up Village for a fun day today. Here they are. I'm Marissa. I'm Dozzy. I'm Keegan. I'm Claire. I'm Zia. I'm Peño. I'm Nicole. And I'm Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm Eugene. I'm also the Game Ranger friend. Cool. Oh, cool. cool. Lady Giraffles and Mickey Mikey are out in the bush today doing what animals do eating. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't we play a game today? Who wants to play? Me! Me! Great! I will explain how it works. The rest of the world plays Simon Says, but here in Africa we play Pumba Says. Mm. Keegan will be Pumba. The rest of us are all players. Pumba will tell us what we must do, but there's a catch. Ooh, I get it. We must only obey commands that begin with the words Pumba says. So if he says Pumba says touch your nose, then you must touch your nose. Mm -hmm. But if I do not say the trigger phrase Pumba says, you are out and you have to sit down. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's start. Pumba says do the chicken dance. Pumba says put out your hands. Pumba says higher and higher. You're out. <laughs> okay, Pumba says wiggle like a worm. Pumba says stop. Pumba says sit down. S stand up. <laughs> okay, Pumba says stand up. You're out here. Pumba says touch your ears. Pumba says touch your nose. Touch your eyes. You're out. Oh, <laughs> <that's easy. laughs> uh, Pumba says rub your elbow. Pumba says, rub your nose. Pumba says, jump up and down three times. Jump up and down another five times. Eugene, you're <laughs> out! <Whoa. laughs> what a fun game. But the game we just played reminds me of something. Did you know we all have many thoughts in our heads every single day? We have our own thoughts. God's voice, our friends, and even the devil who can speak to us. But whose voice do we listen to the most? Mine. Our, our, our teachers. teachers. <laughs> our friends. God's voice. Your parents. Mm -hmm. My twin brother, we look the same. <laughs> <laughs> Here's another question for you. What do you think we should do when we see someone being bullied? In our game, when Pumba says do this or Pumba says do that, we did it. But what do you think Jesus would say we should do when we see someone being bullied? Help the person who is being bullied. That's very kind. Arrange something with the bully so we won't bully people anymore. Hmm. Yes. I know. We could maybe talk to the bullies and tell them that what they're doing is wrong so they can change their ways. Kids are friends. How many thoughts do we have every day? Infinity. Let's see who has the first right answer. One million. The Two million. million. Zillantian seven and a half. <laughs> <laughs> it feels like that, doesn't it, Eugene? Mm. You did well. 
Okay, let's see how many thoughts we might have popping into our heads. All of us have good thoughts mm -hmm. and bad thoughts. Mm -hmm. The good thoughts could come from our parents, teachers, Jesus, the Bible, and even God's voice. The bad thoughts usually come from bad friends and the devil. <gasps> All of these are just natural thoughts we get every day. Whoa, kids up, friends. That's a lot of thoughts to deal with all at once. No wonder we get so tired. <laughs> How do you know which thoughts are good or bad and which ones to obey? Let's think about it, Eugene. Do you think God will ask me to hurt someone? No. no. Will he ask me to take care of someone? Yes. yes. All I can think about now is doing what Pumba tells me to do. <laughs> <laughs> you see, friends, you can't stop a bird from flying over your head, but you can stop it from making a nest in your hair. Help! Help! It's too late! I allowed this bird to sit on my head! Now he doesn't want to leave! <laughs> oh, Jean, this is exactly what we spoke about. By not chasing the bird away, you are the only one to blame for the nest on your head. Oh, no! I think you're right, Nerissa. That bird is just like a thought that enters your mind and makes a nest inside. Oh man, please. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Keegan. Man. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, yeah, Our thoughts can be very difficult to control, especially if we allow bad thoughts and the devil to stay in our minds. It's almost like putting a good policeman at the door of our minds. We must guard our thoughts and not allow the devil to live there. I don't think anything good can come from a head full of bad thoughts. Hey, I remember a Bible verse that I learned in children's church. It was in 2 Corinthians 10.5. It says that we must take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Hey Keegan, man, I don't understand that. How do we make a thought obedient and how do we keep it captive? I've got a pretty good idea. You do? Yes. Oh man, how oh, cool. Oh. Hey! Oh. Thanks, Keegan. You, you, you clever. Hey, guys! My thoughts are now captive! <laughs> <laughs> no, Eugene. What this Bible verse means is that when we have a bad thought or even a thought we aren't sure about, we should say no to the thought. Ooh. That is taking the thought captive. Ooh. When we say no, it's like we're stopping the bird from making a nest on our heads. Once we've gotten rid of all the bad thoughts, we need to replace it with one good thought. I remember a while ago at school, I saw some bullies take another girl's school bag. I didn't know the girl very well but what I knew was that the bullies were very mean. So I thought to mind my own business and just walk away. But then I decided that I should tell her the truth about who took the bag so it would help her. And that's what we mean by making our thoughts obedient to Christ. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5 Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Take every thought captive and make it obedient to Christ. Does that help you, Jean? Oh, yes! I don't have to live with my head in a cage! <laughs> <laughs> Eugene, I see you're beginning to understand your Bible verses. Mm -hmm. Let's have some fun drawing pictures. Kids have friends at home. Wouldn't you join us in this art challenge? Draw a picture of a mind with good thoughts and send it to the address on the screen. That's a cool idea. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, let's do yes, it. Fantastic. Come on, Eugene. Yeah. Yeah, this is going to be fantastic. Yeah, I think this is going to be fantastic. Before we start our craft, let's read the story of the wise and foolish builders. It's story time! It's story time! And Jesus told them this story. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice is like a wise man who built his house upon the rock. Thank you. 
But everyone who hears these words of mine and does not put them into practice is like the foolish man who built his house on sand. The rain came down, the stream rose, and the wind blew and beat against the house, and it fell with a great crash. Friends, what is a parable? I think it's a story that you can learn from. So basically it's just stories. Yeah. yeah. Friends, think about your lives. Was there a time where you felt that you were busy building a house on sand? Oh, I remember. It was when I decided not to study for my test. It was when I did not go to school. That couldn't have ended well. And can you remember where you did something good and you were building your, your life on a rock? I never helped my mother, now I, I do. That's it's a, a good, good thing, thing to help your mother. mother. Well, I didn't focus in church much, but after that, I started focusing in church. But after church, I felt much better. So how do we decide whether to build on sand or on rock? Mm. Uh, I don't know. It starts in our thoughts, and then we speak it. Then after we speak it, we do it. Then when we are doing it, we are building. Can you give me a few examples of good thoughts and bad thoughts? I did a good thought when I thought of my friend when he was sick and when I thought of a way I could help him. Good. Um, well, I have an example of a bad thought. It's when um, you think about bullying somebody. Kids up, friends. Have you ever seen someone being bullied? Mm. When you yeah. see someone being bullied, what would you do? I'll take the beating for him. I'll trade something so that he can, the bully can leave him alone and I'll, when I get home, I'll pray for him. That's very kind of you, Princess. Thanks. Morning, Pena. Morning, Keegan. Morning, Morning Raja, Raja. Raja. Welcome to our park. I'm the game ranger here and people call me Ranger Ray. So welcome and uh, I'm sure if I had to ask you guys what my favorite activity would be here at the park, it would you'd probably come up with the right answer and that would yeah, be camping. camping. You're quite right. Well, you know, it's the greatest thing to be outdoors and to be with nature and, and camping and hearing the sounds and the smells of Africa, to hear frogs and an owl in a tree that's far away just hooting. <laughs> Do you know that I've actually had elephant walk right past close to my tent? Wow! While I was in it, yeah, that's right. You must be real brave to sleep outside in the bush. Well, I don't sleep just in the bush. I always take a tent along. You know, that protects me from the wind and the rain. Do you know how to pitch a tent? Um, mm. I think I do, but I've never really done it alone before. Will you teach us how, Ranger Ray? Eh? Certainly, but you know, it's very important first that we find a safe campsite and then to find a level piece of ground. Did you bring your tent along? Yes, we did. Great, let's go. This looks like a level strip of ground we got here. Few obstacles, but I'm sure you guys can remove them. You know, when we got Jesus in our life, he helps us to remove obstacles. Penny, I just want to say something. and. It's so good to see both of you together camping because we never ever go camping alone. Why? Is that? If trouble arises and it sometimes does, we've always got a buddy buddy system to help each other. And it's like having Jesus in our heart. He's always there to help us. So That's you've true. got a solid piece of ground here, a firm foundation, and Jesus is our foundation. Our relationship with Jesus is the most stable foundation we can have. 
I see that you've got a fairly simple tent to build there. We get difficult tents. And this one seems to be simple enough for both of you. Right, you got the poles. Hmm. Looks like you guys are doing well. I'll keep an eye on you and just see what you how you're doing. If you need me, give me a shout. Okay. We don't want to start a real bushfire where we're camping. So a safe place with rocks around it is a good place. Do you know that reminds me that Father God has made a special place in our heart to share with somebody and that somebody should be Jesus and the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us that behold I stand at the door and knock and Jesus is standing at the door of our heart and he's knocking and he wants you to open that door and let him in. Do you know that Jesus is a gentleman? He'll never just kick down that door and walk in. He wants you to invite him to come into your heart. Our heart is kind of like a tent and it's what we allow in that tent. Talking about a tent, what now our guys are doing? Well, our tent is a special place that we need to invite the Holy Spirit into and Jesus and that's our heart. Did we just pitch our first tent? I think we just did. Let's see what Ranger Ray is doing. I th I'm sure he he'd be really happy about this. Yeah, I think so too. Well done, guys. I was keeping an eye on you and you did a pretty good job. Well, you got your tent up. I think you deserve some biltong and some water. Well Thanks, Ranger Ray. Done. Well done. You know guys, while you were away, I was chatting to our friends at home and I was telling them about inviting Jesus into their hearts. That reminds me of when my mom and dad first told me about Jesus. You know, really? I was only 14 years old when I accepted Christ into my life. Before then, I didn't know that I could have him in me. Honestly, I thought he lived in the church. But then now I know I have him with me everywhere I go. And that's kind of awesome. I remember when I gave my life to Jesus, I was nine years old and I was sitting in my mom's room and she was reading Bible to me. And she asked me if I wanted to be a real Christian with God everywhere I went. And I really wanted to be a real Christian. So I asked God to come live in me and be with me everywhere I go. And from that day, everything in my life has changed. Boys and girls at home, I wonder have you ever invited Jesus into your heart and into your life? You know, that's probably gonna be the most important decision you will ever make in your life. Don't you think? Yes. Let's get this fire going. Watch your feet there, Keegan. We don't want toasted feet. In Romans 10 verse 9 it says, If we believe in our heart and we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord, we'll be saved. And you know what that means. You, you guys have done that yourself. And when we invite Jesus to come and live in our heart, that's a decision that we've got to make. And He comes and He lives inside of us. And then heaven becomes our home because Jesus becomes our salvation and our Savior. Would you like to help us as we pray for the children and with the children at home to ask Jesus into their heart? Will you help me? Gladly. Wonderful. Boys and girls at home, I'd like you to pray this prayer with me. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. For sending Jesus. For sending Jesus. To die on the cross for us. For the cross for us. Please forgive my sins and all the things that I've done wrong. Please forgive my sins and all the things I've done wrong. I accept Jesus as my Savior. I accept Jesus as my Savior. He will live inside of me forever, as your word said. He will live inside of me forever, as your word said. I'm now a child of God. I'm now a child of God. Amen. Amen. Do you know that that's one of the most important things any human being could ever do 
and that's ask Jesus to come and live in their hearts. Do you know that, boys and girls at home? That's the most important thing you've ever done in your life. And Jesus says, he will never leave you or forsake you. You know that, Pena? You know that Jesus will never leave us or forsake us. Isn't that a wonderful thing? That's very cool. Yeah.